So all it will do is uh, permit the legislature or give the legislature the authority to pass a local option, and let me emphasize that local option, liquor by the drink bill, and that's it. Senator, why has your organization and you personally fought so hard to get this sort of legislation in Texas? Well, there, there are a number of reasons, but I think uh, basically I, I know that I feel that what we presently have is, is a dishonest and hypocritical system. And uh, I'm convinced that it does more to, to foster the disrespect, not only for the liquor laws in Texas, but for all the laws in Texas. And uh, I am, uh, I'm determined to change this unhealthy uh, situation that presently exists. Next year, we're told that we're gonna be faced with another tremendous tax problem. And will this alleviate that situation in the event that it passes? Well, it'll be a major step toward alleviating it, and it could very easily mean the difference between a uh, either a corporate uh, or a personal income tax or, or, or not if it passes and the revenue comes in as we predict it will. Well, at this point, our investigation is not complete, and uh, I'm not in a position to make that statement. The only statement I can make is that he had every reason to believe that a felony had been committed. He was perfectly within his rights to make the arrest. The question here is whether or not he had the authority to use as much force as he did in making the arrest. So this is a question that we have to resolve, and I can't make a comment on that part of it until the investigation is complete. I uh, don't think we should ever announce what we were going to do. I, I don't think we should announce we're not going in by 21 miles. It seems to me all you're doing is helping the enemy when you make that kind of announcement. I would think from the way things are developing that probably the South Vietnamese may go back in there, but I would doubt very much that we do. This Oak Cliff Neighborhood Center will be one of 34 polling places used tomorrow in the War on Poverty target area board member elections. There are a total of 35 candidates running for the 11 positions to be open, with at least two candidates in each position. War on Poverty Deputy Director Albert Orozco is in charge of the election, and he's enthusiastic about it. But he says his greatest problem has been running a properly conducted election on such short notice. The election is supposed to be run in principle, according to the principles of the Texas Election Code. Curiously enough, Orozco says he hasn't gotten all the support he would like from the current community and governmental board members. Only half of those have said that they can take part in poll watching tomorrow. Of the current target area board members, all but two will be helping in tomorrow's election. Anyone over 21 who lives in one of the 11 target areas can vote tomorrow. All he has to do is show up at his polling place and give his name and address. This kind of election is something of a first for the war on poverty, and because of that, neither Acting Director Bennett Miller nor Deputy Director Albert Orozco say they have any idea of just how many people will show up to vote. This is Teal Salon reporting. As you know, of course, there's much debate going on in the Senate right now. And the last few days I've been over in the Senate uh, quite a bit on a conference on our space authorization bill with the senators and the ones I talked to seem to think that they have the votes to take some action either on uh, limitation of money or, uh, or a resolution saying the president uh, did something he shouldn't have. As far as the House is concerned, I don't think there'll be anything done. If, uh, if something comes over from the Senate uh, limiting money on the Campbell election, I don't believe the House would ever agree to it. You don't think then that the president will have the funds limited? You don't think I the don't fund think the president will have the funds limited. Uh, certainly Cambodia is a, a can of worms and uh, uh, it's a most difficult situation where over there we're fighting an enemy who don't consider any boundaries, be it Laos, be it Cambodia or any place, and yet uh, we try to abide by certain rules while they sit just across the river in Cambodia with all their supplies and, and, uh, and guns and uh, 
kill our people. And uh, I for sure don't uh, condemn the president. Uh, I think we should have done this five years ago. What do you mean by one-man rule and polarization of the community? Well, just like I said, it's uh, any person that has the power that he can call the governor and cut off funds or do anything that the four commissioners of Dallas County can do, and we were the elected officials, elected body of this county. I say it's one-man rule, and I say it's a sad day for this community when he can go all over this county and make speeches against the commissioners and against the particular fa uh, uh, group of people in this community. It's bad. And I think this will affect the business community, and I think it'll affect the people that's come, that want to come in this community. They'll be run off by such people and statements as Judge Starrett has been making for the last six months. I don't think it's good for this community when one person can polarize it and make hate speeches and speak out against the poor people of this community and expect this community to stay together. I can remember back in 1958 when we had about the same situation here. And I hope that we don't get back at, uh, in, the, in the 1950s again. At the time of this shooting, Officer Newsom had reason to believe that a crime had been committed. There were two persons behind a building, service station, and one was carrying a box. When the officers approached the two people, they ran in separate directions, and one of the persons being chased by Officer Newsom refused to halt upon his command to halt. As a result, Officer Newsom uh, fired one time, but it struck the youth. Now, circumstances can be deceiving in a case like this, and you must understand that this officer at the time of this incident had every reason to believe that a felony had been committed, and he was acting at that time to the best of his judgment. He had every reason to make an arrest under these circumstances. This incident is very regrettable. And this matter will be referred to the Dallas County Grand Jury for a determination and this procedure will be the policy of this department in the future as well. We want someone with a legal authority to look at this case in an objective way so that we can make the proper determination of whether or not this officer was within his authority to make this uh, action. We recently had some in-service training regarding the use of firearms, and as you know, our policy now is one of following the state statute in this respect, and we will, we will begin to re-emphasize the policy that the officer must use as his guidance in this respect, and in addition to that, we will begin to uh, emphasize the moral obligations of a police officer in a situation like this. This is one of the things that we need to really bear down on, and one which we have not uh, given as much emphasis in the past as we should have. In my opinion, our veteran hospitals are in the worst shape they've been in my 20 some odd years in Congress. We have just completed a complete survey of the whole 165 hospitals. And since that time, uh, we have persuaded the uh, White House to ask for an additional 50 million, and in the appropriation bill last week, we put in an additional 25 million. So we put in about 75 million additional dollars this year. Now, Phil, uh, uh, I think a, a telling point on our veteran hospitals is that veteran hospitals have a, a an employee patient ratio about 1.5 employees per patient. In all your other hospitals, they run up to three uh, employees per patient. In your, the three is your teaching hospitals. Most of the others are, are 2.7 or something like that. So that one fact alone 
uh, proves a lot of things. Now, we've had complaints from doctors working in hospitals from all over the United States, from Miami, Florida, from Boston, Massachusetts, from Los Angeles, California, and uh, our hospitals here in Texas are not as bad as some of the others, but our hospitals here in Texas are short of personnel, and they're short of money to operate their hospitals. Where will the money go? Will that go toward more personnel, or will it go toward operating expenses? Still, it'll go to both. We have bought uh, medicines changing, so uh, your intensive care wards, kidney machines, and, and a lot of equipment like that that we have bought and don't have the personnel to run them. Part of the money will go there. Uh, part of it will go just for additional personnel.